だね。You can't just jump on people. Come <laughs> here, boy. <laughs> so, guys are trying to steal my charger. It's always. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it's like right about to turn 11 o'clock, and I'm just sort of settling in for the night. Um, cause after I finished work at 7, I went ahead and started working on editing. Um, I have the vlog for last week posting tomorrow at noon and I worked on editing that last night and uploaded it while I was working today. And then tonight I worked on editing the next review reread on haul challenge. And so that just finished rendering the last few minutes as I was like finishing up working on thumbnail and whatnot for it. And so it's now uploading overnight. And I believe it'll be coming out the last week of March. Um, so yeah. Things are happening. Progress with the channel. Yay. <laughs> um Today was technically not as good of a reading day as yesterday because yesterday was literally just like listening through the Hate You Give on audiobook and of course the very intriguing book to listen to so I was perfectly happy to listen to it all through and then today I started off with um, reading uh, A Walk to Remember while things were fit, like a little bit on the slowish side today at work um, but I still got fairly slow progress through it. I maybe read like a page at a time um, and then had to go back to work and like obviously these are fairly short pages so yeah I only managed to get to page 51 and pretty much all that's happened so far is um, Landon tries to um, help himself get into UNC for college by taking his dad's advice to um, run for student body president his senior year and ends up winning and um, since he is part of the um, student council, however you want to put it. Um, he's apparently required to attend the homecoming dance and like all the girls that he's like friends with already have dates when he starts asking around and so he literally like calls up pretty much everybody <laughs> that he can think of and then decides to ask Jamie 
um, and take her as sort of a last resort. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much as far as it's gotten is literally he just finished like being grilled by her dad and uh, she walked in with her outfit for the dance and basically he was saying like, well at least it's not what she wears to school, like at least she can wear her sweater and I think that's literally like the last sentence. No, the last thing after that was where he was saying he wished she, she had worn her hair down instead of in a bun like she usually does. And that's where we left off. So, not too far at all. Um, this got me through till... I think my, like, long lunch break because... I was super tired because I accidentally stayed up too late watching the first like half of WandaVision last night. So we were watching that after I finished editing. So probably like 11.30 to like 2.45 in the morning. Binging. <laughs> um, so yeah. I was super tired today and ended up taking my... Uh, 11 o'clock break to nap for like 10 minutes uh, since the other five were spent like cleaning stuff up a bit and whatnot but anyway so yeah nap through one of my breaks and so I ended up eating later than usual so I usually eat lunch on my 11 o'clock break um, so I didn't eat until my longer break at like 1 45 and I ended up watching uh, the newest Trent, the, the this line's getting me today, uh, the newest Tim Tracker vlog um, while I eat lunch. And then after I watched that, um, I ended up listening to my audiobook, which I ended up doing a swap on my TBR. So. Instead of the space between worlds, we are reading this one here for the book of the month prompt, as you can see, November 2018, which is For Better and Worse by Margot Hunt. And um, so basically this one, um, I'm not 100% sure on if both the husband and the wife work as attorneys. Or if they just happen to have, like, this big, like, conversation about working as attorneys, um, when, more or less, when they went on their first date or something, um, that really, like, connected them with each other. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, basically... They have started drifting apart a little bit over the last couple of years, and their son, I'm not really sure of his age. Like, I want to say, like, maybe around eight or nine-ish, based on how, like, conversations have been going. Like, at first I thought younger, like, maybe like four or five, but with some of the way the conversations have been going... <laughs> When the kid talks about like school and whatnot, it sounds closer to like around the age of nine ish. Um, but basically, what's going on is um, I believe it's the principal at the kid's school is accused of having inappropriate relations with some of the children in the school. And basically, they, the main uh, woman doesn't want to basically report that her son was one of the victims because as, and uh, I think a, the term is a d criminal district attorney, could be wrong on that offhand, um, she's like basically saying like she knows how, you know, the routine tends to go, how this affects the kids that end up having to like testify and everything in these cases and she'd prefer to just give him private therapy and not 
reveal who it is um, to the therapist just to try and like ease the effects on him as he grows up later. However, they for sure want to make sure that the principal you know, can't keep doing this to other kids. So she's like, what is it that we're going to do? We're going to kill him. And yeah, basically the whole thing is like, the way it was teased to me initially is like, when one of them commits murder, is the spouse going to like, hold to the wedding dolls of for better or worse and like stand by their side. Yeah. So that's what we're reading. <laughs> it's a crazy one. But um, it's very interesting to see how this goes. Because she's being very meticulous up front like trying to make sure she covers her tracks so like nothing has actually happened in terms of her killing anyone but she started the prep work for it so like she was like talking about how she went to her bank and did a withdrawal of like eight hundred dollars to like pay for like all the supplies and stuff she needs to get this done and she's basically decided to try and make it look like a suicide so that no one will be like looking for someone that may have done it and I believe she has um, she purchased drugs from someone that she's supposed to be defending um, and yeah she I don't remember what it is but yeah the general idea is supposedly that I guess he'll OD on it whenever, however she gets it to the principal. That'll be like the sort of suicide thing. So yeah, a couple hundred dollars of what she's withdrawn from the bank goes to that. And then I forget what else, um, what another thing was that she had done. But basically, like, she, when she took the money out of her bank, she was, like, doing a little mini monologue about how, yeah, if they look into it, they'll, they might notice something suspicious because she doesn't ordinarily get, like, large withdrawals of cash. But she can easily explain it away as, like, getting shoes or stuff for the house or this or that and whatnot. So, yeah. It's interesting to see the thought process of how she's like preemptively like trying to cover herself. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes from here because yeah. It's crazy. Anyway. So yeah, those are my two books that I'm currently working through. So I'm trying to decide right now if I wanna try and I think I might go ahead and try and just like read through a bit more of A Walk to Remember now that I'm off work to actually get like a good chunk of actual like solid process in um progress not process well um and then watch the same TV before it's time for sleep because I have about three hours because I usually try and go to sleep by like two o'clock so I can be up Eight. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on for right now, and I still am feeling pretty good about finishing the readathon in time, but I will need to make sure that I do a bit better in terms of keeping on top of reading through the rest of the week because today there was a little while where I did just sort of like. I, I did actually stay on YouTube more than just the Tim Tracker video, thinking back on it. Not a whole ton, but like a decent bit, probably like an hour or two. Yeah. Anyway, before this gets any longer and puts me any 
closer to the end of the night, I'm going to go ahead and call this an end and get back to reading.
that door, I can do it like as quiet as possible where I can, like, I can't even hear it. And yet, he's always there scratching at the door. Even though I haven't seen him anywhere in the vicinity, he's probably, last I've seen him, he'll be in the other end of the house asleep. And yet he'll be clawing at that door, trying to get in within 30 seconds to a minute, usually. So of course the one time I set out a camera to like catch how quickly he runs up, he doesn't. Takes a sweet time. True cat fashion. <laughs> anyway, I have once again shirked my vlogging um, duties for probably like half the week, but things were happening. Um, I got to meet up with my best friend up in Atlanta for her birthday. Um, our schedules are super crazy, so since hers are changing and we didn't have any off days that lined up together and I didn't want to wait a whole other month, which is what I would have to do before my next chance to visit, we ended up having me go up Pretty much Thursday was just like a packed day for me. Um, I went to a doctor's appointment Thursday morning and uh, did my annual exam and it was super fun because uh, apparently I must have like deep veins or something because as always they could not get the blood draw on the first or second try. and. As usual, they had to go back and forth between both arms. Except, unlike the last couple times I've had my blood drawn, they couldn't get it at all. So, I'm used to going home with both arms bandaged because they've tried both arms, gone back and forth a couple times, to the point where I don't remember where they ended up actually getting a successful draw. But uh, yeah, this time they stuck me this arm here, and no, that was actually the second try. They stuck me on this side first, here, and then they went over here. You kind of see this though, Bruce. And then when this one didn't work, they're like, I'm honestly considering maybe having to use your hands because we cannot get anything because literally it was like one drop. So then they decided to go here. So I have two in this arm and one over here and nada. So yeah, not only am I bruised and had everything sore and still got super lightheaded and nauseous, not quite to the point that I usually do when they actually successfully draw blood, but still enough that I'm just like, I'm gonna chill here in this chair for just a couple minutes before I leave, if you don't mind. <laughs> So yeah, fun. So um, I still have to go back and have them try again. Cause I said no thanks to drawing from my hands. Cause no. They tried a butterfly needle even on that third try on this left arm. No, didn't work. Nothing worked. <laughs> Super fun. And so yeah. That's going to be fun to go back during one of my days off this week, probably, and see how that works. Though, thankfully, I can just do a walk-in, and literally, my doctor is only legit, like, a five-minute drive from our house, so it's not a big trek to have to go back, but I'm also still like, why? Anyway, um, so yeah, after the appointment, um, went home ate lunch and then did like the fastest grocery trip pretty much ever um, and it did that came home rushed to unpack everything and put it all away and then packed up everything for my Atlanta trip and ended up leaving here around 2.45 in the afternoon I want to say and got there um, about to town around 
shortly after five. And then basically Beth and I ended up having a stay over at her new house since it's just her and me. And I brought everything of my own from air mattress, pillows, well, one pillow, multiple blankets, um, and just everything so that we wouldn't have to worry about me borrowing anything from her just to be safe. Um, and we ended up um, going to, an, well, we ended up picking up uh, food from this like ramen restaurant, Oikos, I want to say it was called, um, nearby her place. And we got like five orders of dumplings and because I'd already eaten a little bit uh, as I got to town because I was starting to feel nauseous again, most likely from the whole failed blood draw crap. Um, I wasn't super hungry so I had like one share and she had like the other four. <laughs> and we ate the dumplings while we watched Raya and the Last Dragon. And so that was super fun. And yeah, just sort of chatted, caught up for once because before this past Thursday night when I stayed over um, for this, I saw her mm, I saw her for maybe an hour during her lunch break when I found out that she had moved to her new house last month on my previous visit. And then before that was probably, I think it was before Christmas. So probably like November-ish, give or take a month, <laughs> um, when I was visiting my family's house and she stopped by during her lunch break when she was still living at her parents since she used to live only two doors away from my parents' house. Um, and that was only for maybe 30 minutes. Um, and then the last time before that was the January before COVID when me, well, when I basically ar helped arrange a gathering of like all my super close friends up in Atlanta between Beth and then also Lisa and Eleanor. So we all hung out as well as Lisa's daughter Callie who was super adorable and at that point was barely mastering the ability to walk at not quite a year old. <laughs> so it's been a very sporadic chances of meeting her. So I wanted to make sure something worked out for her birthday. So yep. And then since she has her new house out, um, basically on like the edge of Woodstock, I ended up going into downtown Woodstock after visiting with her. So after we like caught up in the morning, before as she was signing in for work, um, I went ahead and went to a few old haunts, so to speak. Um, and went to see the duplex that we first lived in on our own in Woodstock when I was in like first grade till about mid three quarters of the way through fourth grade. And then there was like a single story apartment that we lived in um, a few streets away from there. Um, in like just under a year we lived there in, when I was in 7th grade but, and then I stopped by the old uh, Woodstock elementary school building that I used to go to that is now a Chattahoochee Tech campus which is still throws me off so much to see it repurposed as a college campus and our old playgrounds are just 
a parking lot on a hill now. <laughs> so it used to be like, there's this giant hill on the side of the school and the like slope of the hill was where like the younger grades had their playground area and then the bottom of the hill I remember was like all the older kids. It was like the cool place you wanted to be old enough to go play down there. I don't know how official that was, but that's a thing that I remember. <laughs> so yeah, the traffic was god awful. I do remember that. And so yeah, it was very strange to see how much of like that downtown square has stayed the same and it also changed a whole ton over the years. So yeah, and after that I pretty much headed on back home after just exploring there for a bit. And so yeah, now that I've um, sufficiently rambled about non-book things for over 10 minutes, um, we might as well go ahead and wrap up my experience with the Backless Readathon. <laughs> um, and the good news is I did finish in time, though I cut it pretty darn close. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned in my previous vlog, I listened to the whole of the audiobook for The Hate You Give on my Sunday shift last week for work. Um, and then on Monday, I uh, ended up reading through a book to remember, and I think this continued into Tuesday as well, and ended up pairing that with For Better and Worse, uh, but we'll get back to that one. So uh, yeah, I was a little intrigued by some of the differences in this book compared to the movie, which of course I couldn't help but immediately watch the night I finished it, reading it, even though it meant having to rent it from Amazon, because, yeah. anyway, so yeah, this like, pretty much the main difference just comes down to, like, more so the timeline of things slightly, but, um, in the beginning with them starting to hang out with each other is completely different reasoning, because in the book, um, I think I mentioned in the, no, yes, okay. Mixing up last week's vlog and like this week's that I filmed, but I haven't actually like it'll be the same video. Anyway, I think I mentioned earlier this week in an update how um, he basic uh, Landon basically runs for student body president and wins, and that's why he's required to go to a school the homecoming dance. And because he can't get another date, he ends up taking Jamie and as his date and then kind of goes from there but basically in the book he does the play as a favor to Jamie to kind of get in her dad's good graces though it's not really clear much in terms of why he initially would want to make it such a good impression other than I guess just making up for the fact that it's kind of transparent why he took Jamie to the homecoming dance. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, in the movie it comes down to where they like did this whole storyline of him and his friends peer pressuring this like new kid of sorts to jump off this like bridge and ends up like hurting himself on a pipe in the water underneath the little like runoff bridge thing. I'm not really sure how to describe the place they were at anyway. And then he ends up having to do the play as part of like community service and going from there. So that part's a little bit different. So yeah. 
but still very, very good. The majority of it is pretty on par with the book, other than that. So, I enjoyed it, and it was nice to rewatch the movie for the first time in ages. It was, I'm not even sure how long it's been. Probably a good, like, ten years since I last saw that movie. Um, so yeah, um, crossing over between that one and the last book. Um, of the four that I read is For Better and Worse by Mario Hunt and I think I did talk about this one a little bit as well from previously in the week where there's this whole thing with the principal and the one of the parents at the school um, one of her kids was a victim and so instead of putting him through the whole process that is going through a trial and all this she ends up killing the principal and it basically all deals with her how she goes about killing him because she is a criminal defense attorney and she kind of has an idea of like what to do to try and cover her tracks and of course naturally how things unfold when it all naturally just doesn't go right <laughs> and Elle deals a lot with her relationship with her husband um, who gets involved with the crime as well since they started off being kind of on the rocks at the beginning of the book and I'll be honest the ending of it well not unexpected or expected it's kind of just like not surprising, but wasn't really e expecting it to turn out that way based off of the way things will be going. Dang. <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay, this, this is how this is going to end. Interesting. But it's still like fairly open-ended, so, but it stands alone very well and I just, it was enjoyable. Not necessarily got a stand stand out by any means um, for me as like a, a genuine favorite, but it was very interesting to see how it all played out, and of course getting that perspective of kind of understanding where the criminal is coming from with their motives and almost feeling like you want to root for them. Problematic. And back to another point I made earlier in the week, the whole age thing with the son, I was so confused by that. Not like insanely, but I just feel like it wasn't written well to make it clear because I thought his age was all over the place. Because literally I thought this kid was like five initially based on how the parents like treat him, but then his dialogue makes me think he's closer to like maybe eight or so and just giving, giving that much just because of the dialogue and then unless I missed something early on in the book because I did listen to it on audio the whole way through I didn't get a confirmation on the age which is 11 until close like maybe the last third of the book so, there's that slight drawback. So yeah, there's that one. And then the last of the four books that I read for the readathon, the backlist readathon, is this one here, the Doctor Who the Slovene Excursion. Um, and this one was very interesting. It's not one that I disliked but not an, like a giant hit for me either, like Touched by an Angel, which I've kind of talked about on my recent, well, it'll be on my round two of the um, review reread on Hall of Challenge that will be going up at the end of the month-ish. <laughs> so, in the future. Anyway, um, so this one is all centered around the Doctor and just like a one-off companion. Um, so 
pretty much confirming my theory of this taking place more or less somewhere in those 2009 specials. Um, also considering that's the year it was published, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's Tenth Doctor. And so he is at the Acropolis um, and just kind of shows up while this um, one-off companion is there. Her name is June. It took me a second to remember first. <laughs> I just finished listening and uh, reading through this last night and yet already I'm like starting to space. Okay. So yeah, June is like on a mini vacation and um, I think she's from Birmingham and is visiting the Acropolis and while she's there she basically sees the TARDIS just up here out of thin air and watches the doctor kind of run out and off in the distance so she follows him, watches him do his little like save of sorts but it starts to fail um, and at first I thought it was the Slitheen that he was fighting off at the Acropolis but it turns out to be someone else. I'm not going to specify who because it literally is like the very ending of the book. Um, but it's not that important that it's just not the Slutty. <laughs> I just think I wasn't paying quite close enough attention or just the way it was written. It wasn't very clear at the start that it wasn't the Slutty that um, he was kind of fighting against at the start. Um, but basically, he is fighting them off because there's a whole bunch of explosives sitting in the Acropolis and June ends up kind of actually saving him slightly because she kind of scares them away from him when he's like caught in like arm hold or something, if I remember correctly. <laughs> And so the doctor, of course, takes her with him as sort of like a thank you trip. And they, since she has so much interest in the Acropolis, she was gonna, he was going to take her back to kind of see things in their heyday. Um, and they get a distress call from even further back in the area and end up going there and finding out that the Slovene have kind of like taken over the super ancient Ac Acropolis, like Athens, all that sort of area. There's a few different like cities that they've sort of taken over. Um, and basically there's been all these earthquakes going on and the Slovene have been feeding all the humans in exchange for taking care of them, they have that they basically have each sort of city or kingdom sacrifice a few people to go off and fight for eternal glory, sort of. And basically, the whole plot is trying to figure out what actually is happening to these sacrificed people. Because they're not really coming back, of course. <laughs> so yeah. Kind of goes from there. Uh, there was definitely a few spots where there were like silly things that the doctor would do or say. And I f can understand where they were kind of trying to go for the... Like... They were trying to go for kind of like the whimsical... Um, sort of things that the doctor tends to say or do in a typical episode, but I felt like some of them were kind of dumbed down or just didn't come off well. They they just felt a little too immature for it. A little too childish for a couple of other things. Could be my opinion, but that like it's just how I felt with a couple of the things that went on. Um but that mostly was stuff that was like written from the doctor's perspective so I, it may just be that I prefer thinking the doctor has a little bit mature, more mature of a narrative mindset. I don't know. Just me. <laughs> but 
Anyway, I liked it, but um, not at the top of my Doctor Who stories list, but definitely not at the bottom either. It's just kind of middling out there for me. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I finished this in the last minute. I finished through reading through like the first half between Wednesday and Thursday, and then don't think I got to reading much, if any, on Friday. Um, and then ended up finishing it up last night. And I'll be honest, it was hard because yesterday I had like no willpower to do anything except binge Vampire Diaries like all day. And just barely snuck in like reading the last like third of this book for like an hour and a half around like 10 o'clock. <laughs> Last night, just be like, I just need to knock this out so that I don't fail for no good reason. And just want to, like, smack myself in the face later. <laughs> Basically. But anyway, I did it. I finished the Backlist Readathon. We made it. And that's over five books now that we've finished in the month of March so far. And we're, we, we're only, like, halfway through the month. I'm so proud of myself. So, yeah. Now, um, I need to work on editing this vlog, and I'm sure it's going to be a little bit long because I'm here at almost half an hour just for today's thing. Um, yeah. And then, now we move back to reading Ashwater. So I'm about here. I read a teeny bit of it today, but I... We're gonna blame everything on Vampire Berries because I have low willpower right now. And I've binged through like two seasons in like three days. We have a problem. Anyway, there's Ashwater and then I'm also getting back to the audiobook for China Rich Girlfriend soon. We're nearing halfway with this one, so progress. And then once those are done, there's only two others on my TBR. I just have Chamber of Secrets and Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. And I really need to make sure I get to Seven and a Half Deaths of he Evelyn Hardcastle for the Mooney read. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much everything I think I have for this week. And I will see you on Friday with my other book book shopping vlog which was at the local Got Walls Books and thankfully I wasn't rushed for time like I was in the second and Charles because second and Charles I literally parked outside happened to be like let me message Beth to see if she's in the area because I didn't see her parked at her parents house and that's when I found out she had moved and we we're like Oh, well, let's just meet up at your lunch break, which is only in an hour. So I only had like 45 minutes in store <laughs> at the last minute. But I was at the Got Walls for like two hours, maybe three. I think two. So it's a little bit more of a, of a better look at the place, I think, in that one. And so, yeah. That's what's up next for this Friday, and yeah, I can leave it here. See you Friday. <laughs>